Good day everyone and welcome to On The Bench. In this video I'm going to be tying you a sparkle feather duster. And the feather duster was originally created with a real feather duster, that's why it's called that. And it represents a Calabatus mayfly. It's really good in still waters here in BC. Uh, one of my top mayfly patterns for sure. For materials, I'm going to be using a Daiichi 1260 size 12 curved nymph hook. You can use a straight nymph, uh, straight shank as well. Um, I used to tie them that way. I really prefer these curved hooks for nymphs lately. For the tail, I'm using Coke de Leon, and it's speckled, and they call them speckled mayflies. That's why I'm using this. For the rib, I'm using fine uh, Semperfly tying wire and fine, and it's brown. And for the second rib, I'm using Semperfly Flat Tinsel in Mirage, and it's, uh, I think it's 169th. It's very slim. And the reason um, I'm using that is because mayflies are like coronamids. When they're ascending to the surface, they trap gases. So I want a little bit of shine in there to represent that. For the body, I'm using Ostrich Earl. Uh, you can tie this fly in a lot of different colors. Brown is good, gray. Olive, I've done really well on the olive. And for the shell, uh, wing case, sorry, I'm using a golden pheasant feather from Nature Spirit. For the thorax, I'm using Semperfy Straggle String in brown olive. Let's see that. And for thread, I'm using 18 aught Semperfy Nano Silk in brown. I'm going to go ahead and wax my thread. I'm using Cobbler's Wax from Semperfly. Cobbler's Wax is really good for this kind of thread, um, just for this purpose. All different waxes have different purposes. And you want to wax it because it's like a GSP thread. It's very slippery. You want it to stick to the hook, and you also want your materials to stick to it. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to put my debarbed curved nymph hook in the vise. Start my thread about two hook eyes back on the shank. And I like to wrap a good base. I always think that a good fly begins with a good base because you don't want your material sliding off there. Go back to about where the barb would be. Like that. And the other thing with the nano silk, you don't want to snip it. You want to actually just kind of chop it like that. So for the tail, the Coke de Leon, I'm going to take the hackles and pull them 90 degrees out from the stem. And our mayflies generally have three tails. I think there's one type that has two when they become, after they uh, emerge. But I usually tie in four or five just in case I lose one. And it's about half the shank length, not a very long tail. Just tie those right on top. And I usually take and I go underneath my tails to bring them upright and I don't want them wrapping around the hook either when I'm fishing. They're a little long, you can always pull them, but that should be good. Just snip that off. Out there. I'm going to tie in the wire next. starting at the back and I work my way forward um, with the wire, keeping it on one side. You want a nice smooth body. These mayflies aren't very, they're not very um, thick, they're very thin. So keep that in mind when you're tying these. Next I'm going to tie in the Mirage tinsel. And then I'm going to work my way back. To the tail. I'm 
Let me just tuck both of those away for later. Next, I'm going to tie in the ostrich hurl. Um, for the a hook this size, size 12, I'm going to use two strands. That one wasn't very long. I'm just going to grab another one. And I think, like, for if you're tying, like, a 16 or something like that, maybe just use one. If you're tying a 10 or anything, you might want to use three. But keep in mind, they're supposed to be slim. So don't go overboard with the ostrich hurl. And... Unlike peacock curl, I usually chop this from the butt instead of the tip. It's just a little bit stronger and it's all the same, like it's all the same um, thickness, so it doesn't really matter which end you chop. I'm going to go back up to where I'm going to tie in my wing case about the two third point of the hook and tie those in. Right down to the tail and then bring my thread back up. And then you just want to wind these up the body, trying to make sure that the hurls stick straight out to represent the gills. You don't want it all flat. I usually take three wraps in behind, one in front and another one behind, and then my material is not going to slide out. Snip that off. Next, take your wire. Give your mayfly the segmentation. And I counterwind my wire. I usually always do two turns of wire at the back just to hold it nice and strong. And then I just wiggle your way through that ostrich hurl so you're not trapping down too much hackle. Couple turns in behind, one in front, and another one behind. And then I'm just going to pull on my thread and helicopter that wire right off. It comes off nice and easy. Next, I'm going to take my Mirage tinsel and I'm going to counterwind it the same way I did the wire. And I'm going to try and stay in line where I place that wire as well so it's not dropping down too many. Just gives it a little hint of sparkle. And if it gets chewed up, at least you still got the wire underneath. And you can use, um, you know, any color of wire. I know that some people prefer silver wire when it comes to um, ribbing flies. If it's, uh, I think it's a sunny day and some people like gold. If it's a dull day, it's just a personal preference, really. Snip that off. <clears throat> Next, I'm going to tie in the wing case using the golden pheasant. You just want to pull this off the stem. How I judge how, uh, how much to put in my wing case, I always measure it against the gape of the hook. And I find if it just matches the gape, that's about the right amount. Tie it in by the butts. One sec. And the other thing you want to do, you want to wax your thread here. <clears throat> when you're tying in any kind of hackle or wing case or anything like that, make sure that thread has some wax on it to hold it. You can also use, I have other wax too. I might just put it on there for this. And leave some space at the front there. Oh, it slid off on me. 
because you're going to be tying in legs. You don't want to crowd your head. And then just go to the point where I always measure and see, okay, what's it going to look like when I'm done the thorax? And that's about right. Maybe one more wrap in behind there. Make sure it's right on top. For the thorax, I'm using the straggle string. And it's got some UV in it, which is very cool. Gives it just a little hint of shine. Uh, the traditional feather duster actually uses ostrich hurl again in the thorax. And you want to have a few of those in your box too. You don't always want to use sparkle in your fly. Just depends on the day, what the fish are keying in on. It's good to have both. You could use dubbing even. And just build a nice little bushy thorax, a little bit bigger than the abdomen. Tie that off good. For the legs, I'm using Coke de Leon again, the speckled feathers, because they have speckled legs. And I'm going to pull out about, I would say, maybe half dozen per side. I'm going to measure eh, about halfway back, maybe just a little past halfway, and tie that on the side away from me first. You can always pull it up, just make sure it's right on the side. Grab another half dozen. so match them up to the ones you tied in and just hold your thumb against the shank there go around and tighten that up if you don't have enough on one side you got too many on the other you can always add more which is what I'm gonna do right now Grab another Coke de Leon feather here. These uh, feathers are extremely strong too. That's why a lot of guys, pre uh, people prefer them in the tails. Because they don't break as easy as something like pheasant. So I'm just going to add a couple more on this side. That's better. And then you can take all your Coke de Leon and snip that off. Nice and neat. I always push it back with my nail just to make sure it's not crowding the eye. Bring your thread back. And then you just take your wing case. Looks like I've got a straggler. If you get like, you know, a shorter one, you can pull that out of there. Pull it straight over the top. Hold on to it good and tight. Bring your wrap over, a loose loop over top, and then when you get to the bottom, pull it tight. And then you can make a couple of good tight wraps. And then I always go in front. I take one or two wraps in front, and then I go back behind before I chop this off. If you leave it in front, you have a good chance of cutting your thread. And it always helps to have a really good sharp pair of scissors too. I'm using the Loon, uh, Loon Ergonomic scissors. And then again, I take my thumbnail and I just push it back from the eye. 
and then you run your thread right through those and that will bind them down really strong so your wing case isn't going to come off. And whip finish. And that's it, the Sparkle Feather Duster. Try it in all different colors. It's a fantastic mayfly pattern. Thanks for joining me on this episode of Sport Fishing on the Fly, and we'll see you next time.